Hello and welcome to this lesson on resistance and Ohm's law. There are three things I'd like you to be able to achieve during this lesson and they are that you can use a voltage current graph to calculate resistance, that you can describe what causes resistance in a metal conductor and that you can explain voltage current graphs for a non-ohmic conductor. Before we get on to the main points of the lesson though this graphic is just here to remind you of the circuit symbols you should be familiar with for the exam. So these are circuit symbols that you do need to learn and uh, most of them should be familiar to you but um, that's for you to refer to at a later point. So what do we mean by an ohmic or non-ohmic conductor? Well fundamentally an ohmic conductor is one that obeys Ohm's law. And Ohm's law is very simply the equation that we have that links resistance, voltage and current. Now what this means is if you were to plot voltage and current on a graph, so we call it a V, I, or a voltage current graph, then for an ohmic conductor you would get a nice straight line going through the origin where the gradient of that graph is actually equal to the resistance. Now any conductor that has this relationship between voltage and current is an ohmic conductor, but there are some conductors that do not follow this relationship. And they of course are called non-ohmic conductors. So for an ohmic conductor if you create a voltage current graph for it, then you'll get a nice straight line going through the origin. And we have a graphic here on the left with three examples of resistors or conductors, um, A, B and C. And you can see that they have very different, um, very different gradients. And what we need to remember is that the gradient of the line, the steepness of the line, is equal to the resistance. So a steep gradient has a very high resistance and a less steep gradient has a lower resistance. And we can work out the resistance of, a, of the actual component or the resistor or the bulb or whatever it is from the actual gradient of the graph and we're going to do a quick example of that. So I'm going to calculate the resist, uh, resistance of the resistor A. You need to do the same thing for the other two. But it's very, very straightforward. You're simply using the equation for resistance and you're just going to take the values from the graph. So over here I can see that my voltage is going to be something along the lines of 12 volts and I can see that my current flowing through my resistor is going to be 0.4 amps. So I'm just going to put that into my equation 12 volts divided by 0.4 amps is equal to 30 ohms. So we've looked at how you can actually work out the resistance of a conductor from its voltage current graph, but you also need to be able to explain what is causing that resistance and using some ideas about particles and electrons to do that. So at the top here we have actually a diagram, a simplified diagram that's showing what's happening in a conductor. So what we have here is we have a series of atoms that are arranged in a very regular lattice-like structure and then flowing through the metal wire past these vibrating atoms are the free electrons that are being pushed around the circuit by the voltage that you've applied. So what's actually happening within this actual conductor then? Well basically the free electrons are flowing through the metal conductor and they're colliding with the vibrating atoms and it's this that's causing the resistance. The higher the number of collisions the higher the resistance and of course when the free electrons do collide with the vibrating atoms, some of their energy is transferred to the actual atom itself. This gain in energy means that the atoms vibrate more, which causes more collisions and even more resistance. You have to remember as well that as the vibration of the atoms increases, so does the temperature of the overall conductor. So that particle model brings us to the last part of the lesson, which is about non-ohmic conductors. As I said at the beginning, not every component has a constant resistance, and for some, the resistance will change. This means the voltage current graph, like the one on the left, is going to be curved, because the gradient is equal to the changing resistance. Now the graph on the left is for a bulb. The graph gets steeper as the voltage increases because the wire in the bulb is getting hot and as the wire gets hotter its resistance is increasing and you can see this in the way that the gradient is getting steeper and steeper. 
Now we can actually explain the shape of this curve by applying our particle collision model that we looked at earlier. As the voltage of the circuit increases, the free electrons are going to be carrying more energy. So when they collide with the atoms within the structure of the metal, they transfer more energy, and that makes the atoms vibrate even more. The greater the vibration of the atoms means that the temperature and, of course, the resistance are going to go up. So as the voltage goes up, so does the resistance of the wire. So to summarise, this voltage current graph is curved because as the voltage increases, the free electrons gain more energy, which means that they give up more energy in their collisions with the atoms, which means that the atoms vibrate even more, which of course means that the resistance gets steeper or bigger and bigger. So that brings us to the end of this lesson on resistance and Ohm's law. So it's just worth recapping what we were trying to get out of it. And that fundamentally was basically to calculate resistance from voltage current graph, which we looked at an example. We used the particle collision model to explain resistance in a metal conductor. And then we kind of applied that model to a voltage current graph for a non-ohmic conductor to explain the shape of its curve.